had my fun, but I'm done with it. We're Hey everybody, welcome to the video, welcome to the channel. My name is Mike, and as you guys know, we've been working on the pond improvement project. And unfortunately, we got a tremendous amount of rain last night. It was supposed to be a little bit, ended up being, I think, another two inches of rain, which is great for that side that we have done with seed and straw. It is not great for that side. So unfortunately, we are not working on the pond improvement project. Instead, we're gonna hop up and go work on the YouTube yacht. Apparently, getting this cleaned up is gonna be the first step. That wasn't here a couple days ago. Yeah, what are you gonna do, huh? This is the YouTube yacht. It is a boat themed, in case you can't tell, rental cabin project that we are building purely off of YouTube revenue, which does make for a slower build process because it relies on how well the channel is doing. And I will do a much better job explaining that today. A lot of people have had questions that's led to a little bit of confusion, but we'll try to explain that process. We've got three goals in this video. It was originally two, but the, the new down tree limb is now goal number three. Goal number one, we're gonna hop down here and strip out all the forms underneath. This concrete slab you see on top here, this is a suspended concrete floor. You can see the concrete overhang we did with that. And this is what the bottom side looks like. So we're gonna get all of these forms stripped out of here. And it's all opened up and this stuff stacked and organized the best that we can. And then we're gonna take the backhoe. We're gonna try to get this stump out and clean up a little bit around this side and clean up around the front side of this. So that's all cleaned out and ready to go. And we're able to work all the way around this thing whenever we do start framing up. And we're gonna try to get that pile of brush burnt from what was this maple tree. And after looking at that maple tree up there that broke off, I am definitely glad we took that one down because I think that one would have landed on the top of the boat. Let's try to get this thing kicked off first so it can start cooking down. I guess we'll go get the backhoe and get that cleaned up next. Just go use the old wee burner. It just seems to work the best for me. What you can't see very well from right now is there is a very large stump in the center of this pile. I'm sure it will show itself as we start burning this down. Got to figure out the best place to shove that torch in. I don't think this pile's tight enough packed together to burn anything on the bottom side. I have to move to the other side of the stump, then maybe bring the backhoe down and kind of smash everything. Doing a little better on this side. Still need some more stuff in there to get enough heat going. I still got some of that old playhouse my brother dropped off out here to get burnt. Let's go grab some of that we can shove her in there. That wood's still kind of in decent shape. And it does seem a little bit of a waste to burn it, but let's be honest. If I didn't burn it, I'd take it apart, I'd put it in the barn, and I'd burn it 20 years from now. Well, let's just go ahead and get it over with. Go grab the backhoe and get that. That is hot. Let's go get that limb down with the 555 and maybe we can add to this thing. That is really hot though, really. And people ask all the time if I'm worried about forest fires. Not where I am at. I know my area, I know the weather patterns, I know what it's like here. Where I am at, it's not something we worry about. We were worried at the beginning, it was a super dry summer. We thought we were gonna have a big old drought and all of a sudden it changed and it's been one of the wettest summers on record so far, I believe. It's been insanely wet. And the humidity here, sometimes you have to wear goggles just so you can see outside. It's thick, it's thick. I'm 
honestly thinking I can just hit it with the bucket. It's not being held on by much. I just need to get it on the ground so I can cut it up with the saw. So let's just give her the old one two and see what happens. They're handy. Get you the old backhoe you've been looking at. Got about 4,500 bucks in that thing so far and I got about 50 hours on it. This is pretty close to paying for itself so far in what I've saved on rental fees from old Dirt Perfect. So no complaints on that rig. I think it's chainsaw time. I do believe it is. Let's throw a little bit of this in first though. Oh, look at that. Oh, ow. Oh yeah. Just keep throwing her in and hopefully kind of work our way around. Check back in a little bit and see what we got. We're just going to start out with the little 40 volt Ryobi for sure. I got the professional stick picker up or behind me. We're going to get going on this. So we gotta get them tucked, thrown, so it gets underneath those other branches so we can keep moving the fire around there. Give her your best shot. Yeah, not bad. Not bad at all. Obviously it's cooked down pretty good on this side. We got a really good bed of coals now with all the bigger stuff. She's gonna grab me the chainsaw. So I'm gonna cut this one little fellow off there. Then all the green stuff, all the stuff right there, the very top of it, we're gonna throw that all on top of the hot coals and get it cooked down. By the way, if you're wondering, one battery, not a partnership or sponsorship. I bought this with my own money, but I do enjoy it. Use one battery, what's it show? Two bars still, same battery as when uh, we started. Of course, a good sharp chain makes a big difference, but it's nice, especially when you're working with somebody. If she's got a question, she can holler at me and I don't have to yell over a gas saw. We'll get the gas saw for the bigger logs later. This is my favorite part. As you throw this stuff on, right over that fire it slowly dries all that green wood out and every time you throw another piece on it sinks down even closer and closer to that fire tightens everything up and eventually it reaches that flash point and it'll just whoosh right up through the middle and then it'll cool off again and you keep the process going I'm gonna go round up some tools so I can start stripping some of those forms inside. We'll check back in on this thing in a little bit. Let's take a look at what we've got going on in here. And try to remember where I need to start at. Now we are gonna save 
the majority of these studs and they do get reused upstairs. But I think as we take them out, we'll lean them up against the wall. And I'll probably stack them on some saw horses once it's all said and done. We actually have room for the saw horses. These, I might save for some shelving in the barn, but I'm not gonna use on here because they've been exposed to the weather quite a bit more. I think I'm just gonna start down this wall with these outer boards and we'll just kind of start working our way in. I think the biggest trick is remembering how I have all this stuff in here. And these two by fours running down the middle to keep these from bowing or pushing one way or another whenever they took the weight of that concrete. I think that's the next thing I need to take off. videos showing how I did all this. Did I build this wall on the ground and tilt it up? There's screws coming down from the top, right? Yeah, I thought so. I thought so. I didn't do that on this one though. I guess these have to come out first. That's neat. All right. small pieces of uh, linoleum between them and the ground to try to protect them a little bit actually kind of worked. I think I'm going to go ahead and take that center section out. That was just there to support the floor during the pour. It all comes out. This is all be one big open space once everything's out and it's kind of the next thing in the way so I guess let's start on that. I'm sitting here staring at it trying to get a plan because I'd like to leave some of this wood so I can make a railing temporary railing around this thing so I don't fall on it. And, um, I'm thinking maybe I'll just take my cordless circular saw and just cut right there and everything below can come out and this can all stay and I can attach that temporary railing to that. The reason I got to cut it is you've got screws running from that board into that and then from the back side of the plywood, the concrete side, there's screws running this way into there. So if I pull these out and pull that off as one piece it's going to take all that with it. If I cut it and leave it, I think just it being where it's at, it'll stay in place for the most part and allow us to build a railing. I think that'll do it just fine. Hopefully that stays up in place like I want it to and the rest can come out. Walk boards are next. They're, uh, they're going over there. Most of these screws are going to be covered with concrete, but we'll try our best. Oh! 
Oh, heck. Gonna have to do something about that. That is not a great scenario. Those are some good sturdy walk boards, huh? This board was the same as those other ones. It kept them from bowing back and forth, but it also was the walk board support. It's time for those to come down. The walkway is out and obviously that's a mess. I know people are probably noticing that, but that is directly open to the elements. So no surprise there. Once we get everything off, we'll get it all cleaned up and that won't be a problem anymore. The next step though, before I start taking these walls out, I got all these little supports right here. I was holding up the end of those forms. Those need to come out next, and then this can come down, and I'm excited about that. Start with this 2x6 here first, and we'll work our way all the way around. I think I'm getting close to that coming out of there now. I think it'll, might have to take that last one down. Let's give her a few taps and see what happens. Oh yeah. Oh, I see where we're at on that one. Oh, sorry about that, fellas. I'm gonna throw this together one last time this evening so it can cook down. Mama's got some fresh roast she just ground it up, so I'm gonna head back and grill out some burgers. We are burning on the inside of that stump, which I think is going to be great. And what I'm really excited to see happen, aside from that, ouch, see where the coals are at inside? This was a big rotten piece, and it was split. It split whenever it fell on the ground, so it's split all the way through there. See where the coals are at, have gotten to on the inside of that? And when I came down here a second ago, looky there. See that smoke starting to come out of that crack? I bet next time we come down here and look at this, I bet it's smoldering out that in there. Here it is a couple days later. Look at that log down there. Stump itself burnt up a little bit, but I didn't expect it to go too crazy. But look at this thing. Must have burnt right down that seam we were looking at and split open on us. We're going to throw this together real quick and then get back to stripping forms on the YouTube yacht. Got my professional board picker upper today. She's been promoted. So the same thing we did on that side, clearing all that little stuff. We're going to do the same thing on this side. Should be able to remove that and then take that whole big piece off. We'll go ahead and take his angled piece off too. Just let's just get her out of the way. Mom and I are talking there today. We get everything cleaned out here this fall. We can come set a tent up down here and have a camp out in the basement of the yard. Be fun, wouldn't it? Yeah, that sounds fun. Looks like we already got some renters. This is exciting.
So that's good. The place ought to be popular. I don't think they're going to be happy about the checkout procedure, but. All right. screws up there and finish taking those. They're technically harmless and non-venomous, but they're big scary when they come running out of a crack real fast at you. Those wolf spiders like that. Shooting at that thing. You've never seen me get off a ladder so fast. Since we're just using this lumber over in the barn for shelving, we're not going to be as tactful with the removal process. Keep in mind when that technique's used, it leaves you with the screws or the nails sticking straight up. So always take a couple seconds to mitigate that. Save you some trouble later. stuff should be ready to just fall. I think it's just hanging on from the spray foam. We'll give her a few taps and see what happens. How crazy does this look? It's pretty cool, right? So we're pretty much down to those studs. A little bit of room to work with on this end. We're going to build a set of saw horses. I've had several people ask how I build my saw horses. So I'll show you how we do it. It's super simple. They're super strong. And then we'll start getting all this stuff organized as we take that down. Should work really well. well step one is going to be cut four. No, that's wrong. Six two by fours at four feet long. And I just screw them together like an I-beam or wide flange beam. If you want to take the time and get them perfect so everything flushes up, Sure, you know, you do you, I'm more of a function guy. 
I just take these and I put them right like that, under the top one, over the bottom one, like so. Looks awesome though. Remember there's gonna be a bathroom on that end, hence the plumbing. That looks so cool. And the spiral staircase that goes up. This log is burnt down to almost nothing. On that piece, there's still quite a bit left on that. But it's burnt down quite a bit, which is pretty wild. The stump still has a long way to go. So the next step is going to be a railing around that top side. We're going to use some of the lesser quality boards, the ones that were exposed to the weather just a little bit more. Actually, I guess I jumped the gun a little bit. I forgot I got to get these and everything around the top inside corner first. Spray foam that's holding it, in case you're wondering. Added a big old lever. See if that helps me at all. There we go. Very nice. Now it's time to do this railing. This is, we're just gonna whip this together real quick. It's not gonna be rocket science. What do you think Kentucky's National Guard thinks when they fly over? That was one of their C-130s flying over. You probably heard it but didn't see it. What do you think they think when they look down and see a boat in the woods? They must think something of it, because I could hear him full circle come all the way back around. He wanted another look at the yacht. Come and see it sometime, fellas. It's a great thing. If anybody works for the Kentucky National Guard and can get me on a C-130 out of Louisville to fly over this, email me. Shot. Short. Short. Oh. There it is. Nice. Oh, what was that? That was perfect.
That's why the National Guard keeps flying over. They keep hearing reports of these heat-seeking missiles. Oh, yeah. So that'll do. Nothing fancy. Sturdy enough. Whenever like visitors, like friends and family come over, they always want to look down in this thing. It's always made me nervous. And now we got us a railing. It'll be in the way when we start throwing walls up, but that's okay. We can work around it. It won't be too big of a deal. You just watched the video, so you know everything that happened. I don't need a recap, but I do want to introduce you to something. This is called the board, and it'll be displayed every video at some point. People are always asking why we're jumping around from project to project, and in my head it makes sense, but I don't do a good job of explaining it. Let's get into my head a little. Everything revolves around the YouTube yacht, and the YouTube yacht is purely funded by YouTube revenue, which means I've got to make other content that doesn't cost a lot of money to keep feeding in to the YouTube yacht. How are you doing, bud? We're doing a, we're doing a thing. We're doing a thing. Thank you. Projects like the backhoe that are fairly inexpensive to work on, but then the revenue from that, a little goes back into the backhoe, but then the rest of it goes back into the YouTube yacht. Coming back, you guys ready? Projects like pond improvement, which are pretty minimal on cost, just fuel, seed, and straw, and then obviously any revenue from that goes back into the YouTube yacht. My brother's project, again, back into that, any revenue from that. So this is the current project list of everything we're working on, but you guys know this one, the John Deere 318, is no longer a project, is in the process of getting sold, which opens us up a new slot, which I'm going to pick up tomorrow. This, believe it or not, I've had my fun, but I'm done with it. We're gonna like give it away, pretty much. We're gonna sell her super cheap on Facebook, basically for the engine, which opens up another spot for the project. But any of that revenue from these projects all goes back to the YouTube yacht. They generate enough revenue to pay for the parts and materials I need to do that project, but then any excess that's not spent on that project goes back to the YouTube yacht. We just couldn't make enough off of one video to move on to the next project or process on the YouTube yacht. And I will not start the next step as far as the framing goes until we have enough for all. Now we do have some of it sitting there ready to go, but I don't want to start until we have enough to completely dry it in. So we're talking studs, sheeting, floor joists, floor sheeting, upstairs studs, sheeting, roof, roofing on, and windows. I want to be able to dry it in completely. I don't want to get the walls framed and the second story sheeted and then, oh, that month was slow, and now I don't have enough to finish. And then the sheeting, the OSB is going to sit out for two months in the weather. No, we're not going to do that. We're going to wait till we have enough to do all of it. That doesn't mean we can't do little things like the sewer line of the septic, the excavation, which is probably going to be the next video, and things like that. But as far as the actual up and up, we're going to wait till we have the exact amount. And it is all funded by those other projects we're working on. So hopefully that makes sense. And I will present that board at some point in every video in the future to let you know what we're working on, why we're working on it, and where we're going from there to try to keep this and you guys on the same page to the best of my ability. I hope you guys enjoy this video. I hope I get to see you guys on the next one because it will be back on this project doing some excavation, some stump removal, and some dirt work around the front side and the back side of the yacht. And after that, I think you guys are going to be excited for what's coming up. Remember, I got two slots there, and I've already got three projects picked out to fill those slots. So we we gotta get to work <laughs>